Hi, my name is Annie Maslin, and I'm in the lab of Aaron Streets at the University of California, Berkeley. And today I'll be presenting on mapping protein DNA interactions genome-wide with DemoLoSeq. So existing methods for mapping protein binding use coverage as a proxy for binding. So they all rely on similar principles where you put cells into one of these commonly used methods, and then you selectively amplify and sequence short DNA fragments that are bound by your protein of interest. And then you align these short fragments back to the reference genome. And regions where you have higher coverage is where you assume your protein is bound. And while these methods have been very powerful in profiling the binding patterns of over 11,000 proteins in humans, there are some key features of protein binding and regions of the genome where proteins are binding that these methods cannot capture. So the first is short read methods dissociate joint binding information at neighboring sites. So say the aggregate profile looks like this. This could arise from in all cells proteins being bound at both of these neighboring sites, or it could instead be a heterogeneous mixture of cells where proteins are either bound at the right-hand side or the left-hand site, but never both in a given cell. And so this kind of joint binding information across neighboring sites is lost when you fragment the genome with these short methods. These methods also rely on amplification, so you lose endogenous DNA methylation information. So many proteins are regulated by CPG methylation and their binding can be, for example, inhibited by the presence of CPG methylation at their binding site. And so being able to look at protein binding in the context of the local endogenous methylation environment would be very powerful. And finally, short read methods can't map interactions in repetitive regions of the genome. And so to illustrate this here, I show a stretch of the genome where each arrow is an identical sequence of DNA that is repeated head to tail. And the only part of the sequence that diverges is this mutation right here. And so say we had a short read from one of these methods that mapped to this sequence right here. The problem is that it also maps to all of these other positions in the reference. So the only short reads that you can confidently map are the ones that span a mutation or some kind of landmark in your reference. And if we could instead use long reads, we could still anchor our reads in this landmark or mutation, but we'd be able to extend into this repetitive region that you can't see with these short read methods. So to do this, we developed DemoLoSeq, which is directed methylation with long read sequencing. And the first step of DemoLoSeq is we permeabilize nuclei and we bind an antibody to our protein of interest. So we can target any protein that we have an antibody for, and then we methylate in the vicinity of our protein of interest. And the way we do this is through this protein A high F5 fusion. So protein A binds IgG antibodies, and we have it tethered to high F5, which is the methyl transferase that methylates adenines. So in this way, we're recruiting this methyl transferase to our protein of interest, and methylating adenines in the vicinity of our protein. And importantly, methyl adenines are not endogenously methylated in eukaryotic genomes. So we're leaving this bioorthogonal mark of where our protein is bound. And then we're directly reading out this methyl adenine mark using nanopore sequencing. So nanopore really enabled the development of this uh, technology because it gave us a way to directly read out methyl adenine marks that were marking where a protein is bound on long single molecules of DNA. And so what we end up with is these long reads of DNA where we have deposited this methyl adenine mark to 
mark where our protein is bound. And we're retaining the endogenous CPG methylation information um, and reading that out with nanopore as well. And we can look at joint binding events on a single molecule. So we have all of this information contained within the molecules that we're sequencing with nanopore. So in this experiment, uh, we were targeting SEMP A, which is a histone variant that epigenetically defines where the kinetochore assembles during mitosis. And here, what we can see is we have uh, long reads of DNA that are um, these gray bars here, and these blue dots show where methyl adenines were detected. And so what we can say is that SEMP A is accumulating in this region as compared to this region over here. And with short read methods, we wouldn't have been able to map where SEMP A is binding because of these marker deserts. So these are stretches where there's over 10,000 bases between any kind of unique landmark or mutation to be able to anchor a short read. And for free, we're also getting the methyl cytosine information, and we can see that the region where SEMPE is accumulating also corresponds to a depletion of methyl cytosine. This has been previously described using nanopore. Um, here you can see the depletion of methyl cytosine from previous work. And it was thought that the kinetochore may be assembling here. And now we have further evidence that it is because the SEMPE nucleosome density is accumulating in this same region. And while this method is very powerful in looking at repetitive regions of the genome, it's also powerful in all regions of the genome. So here we're looking at CTCF, which is a protein that is important for DNA organization and these loops that DNA forms. And CTCF binding is mediated by CPG methylation, uh, the presence of CPG methylation within its motif uh, inhibits binding. And so here we have single molecules of DNA that are centered at the CTCF motif, and the bases are colored by the detection of either methylamine in blue or methylcytosine in orange. And what we can see is at the motif center, that's where we have this peak um, denoting where CTCF is bound. And this corresponds to a depletion of methylcytosine. So the places where CTCF is bound most strongly are where methylcytosine is depleted. And importantly, we're making this measurements on single molecules. So on the same molecule, we can see a depletion of methylcytosine and an increase in methyladenine. A few other features um, are this dip in the middle, which is where CTCF is physically sitting and blocking methylation. And as you extend out from the peak center, you can see this periodicity, which is just showing the preferential methylation of linker DNA as compared to nucleosome bound DNA. We can also detect joint binding events on single molecules. So here, we're again targeting CTCF, and each row is a single molecule of DNA. And we've anchored the ends of the molecule on adjacent CTCF motifs. And we can see that there's some regions where both sites tend to be bound, one or the other, or a bit of both. And so we can start to look at these kind of coordinated dynamics of protein binding. So DemoLoSeq is a new method for mapping protein DNA interactions that is truly genome-wide. We're able to look in these very repetitive regions of the genome that you can't map to with short reads. We're also able on the same single molecule to look at both protein binding and CPG methylation. And we can look at joint binding information on long single molecules of DNA. So this project was really a group effort. I worked closely with Nick, Kaushik, Owen, and Rachel under the guidance of Aaron Streets and Aaron Strait. And it was really a phenomenal team to work with to develop DemoLoSeq. And please check out our preprint on BioArchive and our protocol on protocols.io. Thank you.